Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. I'm Robert. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler full podcast about both episodes three and four of Secret Invasion. So, unfortunately, we had a, a little bit of scheduling issues when it came down to actually recording and podcasting. Rob went on a little bit of vacation. Steve couldn't make it. So, we said, why not just make it a, a double feature and have fun? <laughs> we'll start off with the first episode, which is episode three, Betrayal. And the synopsis, Steve? Fury uncovers a rebel scroll plot. That's it. That's Short to the point. <laughs> Short to the point. So, uh, overall thoughts about this, Rob? Yeah. So on betrayal, I mean, first of all, um, again, being, um, surprised that Fury was married. (laughs) So that was a big, uh, that was a big thing that, uh, that I was actually, you know, surprised at, but overall, you know what? I have to say that this, this, this show is getting, to me, it's getting better. There's always more little things here and there. It's starting to really grow on me. And that's what I said. I was going to wait for it yeah. to, you know, for it to uh, kind of mature itself. Definitely with number four, which we'll also discuss, it really then took off. But yeah, overall, I think especially Samuel L. Jackson has been doing some great acting in, in this show. And the cast has just been phenomenal. Yeah, I, I agree. He's been he's been great and because he's had to really do dual roles kind of to show Fury before the blip and Fury after the blip. Right. You know, so it's it's been really great. No, I, I thought that episode three was great because it answered a lot of questions that we had and it brought up some more questions. But it, it uh, there was a lot of reveals in in that episode three that, like we're going to talk about, is going to lead right into four. So. Correct. Yeah. And I agree. I, I found it very interesting. They give us these little, little tidbits every mm-hmm. episode that just captures our interest even more so, uh, especially when it starts off from years previous where Fury meets who, as we know, his wife, who is, right. uh, I think her name is Vara. I think that's right. Vera or Para, something like that. And Priscilla is her human name. Human name, so, correct. Yeah. But like Vara, I think is what it was. Yeah, Vara. And they have this little conversation, little poking of like interest, and you could tell where the relationship started. Mm-hmm. But this also goes through like discussion of her and what happened during the blip, I think, a little bit, and even into episode four. We get more of a a realization about what's going on with her and their marriage, as it were, because the the fact that, you know, I I just laugh at the fact that Fury of all of all people, he basically must have coaxed Hawkeye into this. So Clint Barton must have took something, a page from his book to have a life Mm. because he hid (laughs) it from S.H.I.E.L.D. and he hid it from the world. And yet and yet this is a scroll that he's married to Mm -hmm. so and i think it and we kind of get the gist of that in the very beginning because literally the encounter the meet cute that they have at the the cafe Mm -hmm. yeah it was really great i i uh in fact i I have that quote that she says where uh she says uh our unit doesn't exist fury i don't work for you and then he's like okay i guess technicality we can (laughs) we can kind of get together then you know (laughs) yeah (laughs) So uh, apparently he must know her as a scroll at this point. And right, well, she was the she was the scroll that introduced Gravik to him in the first in the last episode yes. in episode two. Right. She was the one that brought Gravik forward and introduced as a small said, boy. Yeah, as a as a as a little boy, right? And so right. this is yeah. now we jump forward like fourteen years to where they're meeting in the cafe. So yeah, and I, I think it, it's a nice little uh, interesting inside view of fury's personal life which we never really get only Mm -hmm. from hearsay from him if you ever noticed it he doesn't get very personal except for well the one person we don't have anymore colby smolders we don't have right yeah you know maria hill yeah yeah no and it's interesting because like the the relationship between like fury and vera it you know he abandoned her twice 
So it just seems like, you know, he kind of takes off, does his, you know, spy thing. And she just seems very understanding uh, about it. I mean, it, it seems like it affects her. Yeah, oh, for sure. Very I mean, she says that. Yeah, but still very understanding about it. You know, when the blip happened, nobody really knew what were those people dead? Were they gone? Could they possibly come back? Nobody really knew. And it wasn't until five years later that everybody came back. You know, so she, you know, she says in that ep- in episode three, she says, uh, you know, I cried in your pillow every night for five years, you know, waiting as if you were dead. And then you come back from the blip and you go, you go away again voluntarily this time. Yeah. You know? So she's, yeah. So she's, she really has that abandonment kind of stuff going on. Yeah. Abandonment issues from her husband. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But was there anything you guys that liked? within like a, a point that you want to talk about that was very much uh, interesting that we could discuss? Well, I mean, one of the big things we got revealed was the Super Scrolls. I mean, Mark, I got to give you the, the credit. You you figured that out. You and Rob figured that out real quick that we were going to get Super Scrolls. You yeah, know? Yeah. And that's what that's what Gravik says. But instead of just one, Gravik says he wants to make all of them Super Scrolls. Yep. So like and that healing factor, where did that healing factor? Because that's a different kind of healing factor. That was from Extremis. Okay. If you remember, what was it? Iron Man 3. The one that people don't want to talk about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's the one with all the uh, different armors. And then they uh, it had also um, the fake Mandarin. Yeah. So okay. The okay. Ex- yeah. So the ex- uh, extremis or extremis, whatever that's they call his, it. That glowing, that glowing Correct. healing yeah. that happens. Okay. That was really cool, but the question I had was mm-hmm. how many how many of them have been changed at this point? Because like in the restaurant, when all those other scrolls are in there and he heals, none of them really acts surprised at all. So I wonder how many if it's just Gravik yeah. and I think well, Gravik is creating an army of these people that have the four core DNA that they have on mm-hmm. file right now, which would be Groot, which would be Extremis. Which would be uh, who else? There was Frost Giant, something about a Frost Giant. Uh, yeah, the Frost, <clears throat> Frost Giant, and then um, so he had, Obsidian. Yeah, he had what was like you said, Groot, uh, or at least the species from Groot, mm-hmm. right? So, and then mm-hmm. uh, the Frost Giant, and there was something else from Asgard. It was an Asgardian something that else. Was that Frost was Frost Giant. No, Call but there was some. I think there was something else. Oh, really? Mm. That we didn't yeah. really get to break down. Probably there yeah. was more. I'm sure there's more in those files that we have not seen. Right. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it was an old computer. Think about it. It was a CRT monitor. Mm-hmm. It had a lot of files. And all we saw was over Gaia's shoulder at that point. But yeah. I wouldn't put it past them that if they had more. And it seems, though, with the extremists that is in Gravik, it is stable because at the point when we last saw this happen in Iron Man 3, people were not stable. They would blow oh, up. They became okay. ticking time bombs and they blew right. up in front of people, which was really the cause and the issues that they had within Iron Man 3. So okay. now I guess the scrolls, since that maybe within their DNA, they're able to control it a little bit and utilize yeah. that to whatever they need. For but when they were sampling it and dealing with it back then, for human DNA, they they got screwed up. Yeah, hmm. interesting. Another thing I actually liked, um, or at least that a stand out. So the bantering before uh, from you know Talos and uh, Fury. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was just a great scene. Um, them in the car, just kind of bickering to each other, and I, that that seemed very very MCU. Yeah, that uh, bar when scene when that. they're when they're in the bar and and Talos makes him forces him to say I I can't do anything without you Talos please help me or yeah, whatever he makes him say yeah yeah that was great that whole back and forth are you gonna have breakfast with me oh I just lost my appetite you know <laughs> basically it, it the the basically the whole episode with the ban- bickering and bantering between those two even during the time when they were interrogating trying to get the passcode from that one scroll. Mm-hmm. It literally boiled down to Talos trying to get Fury to state he couldn't do this without him and his people to be spies and to be a huge thankful. It's it's kind of like one of those like 
friendships that are just not hostile, but are aggravated because, hey, I you needed me, but I was there. But also, I helped you. And right. it's like them throwing each other like, yeah. issues in their faces at the same time. But also, there's that issue of, you know, Talos having to deal with, you know, Fury and Fury being upset. It's like, hey, you hit a million scrolls for me, bub. Right. <laughs> it's like it was only supposed to be X amount of people. Yeah. So that that's literally what it boils down to. It's it's showing their friendship and how it is. They do respect one another. They do care for one another, which we do right. see at the in the next episode too, mm-hmm. because yeah. uh, the the final scene shows that immensely for the fact of what Fury has to deal with now. Correct. Episode five. Yeah. But yeah, and then I, I love what you had to talk about with that with Steve when he uh. When Gravik stabs Talos's hand, it was something yeah. out of Ch- John Wick no, Chapter Four. Other way around, Gravix, Gra- uh, Talos. Yeah, you're right. Talos stabbed Gravik's hand. Yeah, other way around. Right. Yeah, yeah. Talos. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah. Talos does that, and then yeah, he pulls the hand away, and it's straight out of John Wick Chapter Four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah. it heals. <laughs> yeah, you see that. You see that glowing light, and that's really cool. But they could get uh, away with this now because it's Disney Plus, and they're aliens, and they don't have to call it rated R. Yeah, <laughs> well, because there's no blood. I mean, if you make it a glowing hand, then you know that's a cool thing. If, yeah. yeah. If all of a sudden the hand was just you know split in half and it was bleeding, then you know <laughs> little kids are gonna have nightmares for a while. <laughs> yeah, no, I yeah. think they're beyond the point where ki- little kids are actually watching this. I don't <laughs> think uh, parents are. It's like the kids are probably like, this is boring. What is all this espionage stuff? Can I go watch yeah. a little mermaid, mom? <laughs> yeah, it's it's just that, you know, this series, uh, and like I said, even though it, it is, to me, it's very, uh, very interesting. And it's, you know, it has kind of grabbed my attention, mm-hmm. but it is a mm-hmm. slow burn. And the problem with this series, one, it wasn't, it wasn't very well marketed. So because the numbers are really low on this thing. Yeah. And yeah. also the fact that you don't have some of the major players that have come out in some of the movies in this. You have, right. yeah, I mean, Samuel L. Jackson, as great as he is and as great as, you know. Yeah. I mean, he's a fantastic actor. You got Amelia you got, Clark. You got Amelia Clark. Yeah. But it, like I said, I mean, None of them, and, and we, up I, until now, Amelia Clark, honestly, we, like people were like, well, what's her role in this besides her being you know the daughter of the Talos. daughter right yeah. exactly so but it just seems like again this wasn't marketed very well and, and if yeah. they had like you know of course the comic book have the whole thing where uh it's not only people in power but it's also superheroes yeah right you know yeah. which of course it makes you very uh what would say um very suspicious of Rhodey. Mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. because of the way he just came out at nick fury yeah and you know and of course we've you know we'll talk about the next episode in just a moment but yeah i think if they had some of the major players from the mcu movies and somehow they and you know they showed that hey some of these that probably um Fought, you know, were fighting there along with Thanos and all, or you know, against Thanos and all that stuff were actually mm-hmm. scrolls or something like that. We're never going to get that because I'm sure, you know, to get those actors will be a very expensive. Uh, oh, yeah, the, uh, it's show. definitely on that budget where they can't really, so they're banking it on whatever the cast that they have. And yeah. the fact that we do have Rhodey as like a character from the MCU as well as Fury himself. Right. And that be- being two major key players. If they throw I mean, somebody in last minute, I wouldn't be surprised just for a cameo. I, 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 get but, what I totally agree that, that uh, the problem is that these characters that they have are like, even, even Rhodey is kind of a background. I mean, yes, he's a, he's a main star, a main character. He's a big actor. So, yeah. so but they've always, they're always the behind the scenes guys they're putting things together and so i think that's why this maybe doesn't appeal to the same people in mass that like the superhero shows and uh, yeah it's more government based more political uh, intrigue very much like what we covered with falcon and the winter soldier steve 
Mm-hmm. They didn't really have much of anybody on that. Uh, they did introduce uh, Wyatt Russell as the new quote unquote Captain America at that time. And yeah. we're going to get him in, you know, obviously in the MCU standard when it comes to uh, the Thunderbolts. So he's going to be eventually. Yeah. 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 So we're going to get him back. But um. Yeah, but getting back to this episode, episode three, one of the there was one mm-hmm. point that I really, I really enjoyed, especially the second time around. I really thought that moment when, uh, you know, before they go to the restaurant, when Gravik and Talos are in like the museum or the art, that art museum, and Gravik makes that whole speech about soldiers and the difference between soldiers and statesmen, and right. you can tell that he's he's really he's really trying to to offend Talos by calling him a statesman, not a soldier. And I thought that was a really there's a really powerful scene between the two of them. Of of him saying that you know soldiers want to want to fight they don't want to stand uh, for a portrait to be taken so I thought I thought that was really, the second time around really hit me more than it did the first time yeah I, I when I saw it the second time I felt the same way it, it showed more fierceness in what his cause is and where Talos stood in his presence and what he feels and uh, you know Gravix obviously his uh, attitude and feeling about it is attack everything and take whereas with talos he he wants to do it more politically correct integration Mm -hmm. and there's also a conversation too that we get in the uh the next episode with gaia and him oh hold on we forgot uh next next subject gaia's death quote unquote yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 that's that was shocking that was shocking to me and then of course you know again because we've watched the next episode so we know what the the ultimate is going to be of that we should have we should have considered that i didn't even i didn't even consider it when i saw it i was just shocked that she was and i this is i don't mean this in a bad way so don't don't yeah. really take this bad i never realized how tiny amelia clark oh yeah she is, is. oh yeah like, she's a tiny in, in, she's, she... in, yeah in game of thrones they tried to try to call like show her not as being tiny, I think, but She's in like this five one, too. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, like in this one, they really lean into how how tiny she is, and I thought that was that was really. So I'm I'm. This is what my hope is because of we know what the next episode reveals. I want to see a fight between Gravik and uh, what's her what's her scroll name? Gaia. Uh, Gaia. I want to see a fight between Gravik and Gaia because I think that would be a cool fight. That would be interesting. Uh, the the fact that we do get that at the end and we do yeah uh, spoilers everybody we said this is a spoiler full podcast mm-hmm. but you guys have already probably watched episode three already by now and by the time you're hearing this you're like oh crap i already watched episode four right but you know hopefully yeah hopefully but i'm sure they have uh but the thing is is that i i was i was really keen on the idea i was like all right I I was trying to spit this out the last time we were all together and we were talking. If you think about it with Marvel, a lot of people come back. Fury came back. They kind of faked his death. Uh, Rob, you were talking about Coulson too, but that's an alternate universe apparently. And on top of that, they're going to continue this fake out. And they do this in the comics too. They actually do bring characters back. So oh, yeah. I would not be surprised if we get to see a different Maria Hill. Right. I, yeah, I would, yeah. I, I would totally. not put it past that the fact that we got a different Maria Hill. And well, that one keep in, that we got was keep in not mind really that her. uh in the in the coming in the what the um in the trailers for the Marvels. Yes, you do see Maria Hill, and you also see, you know, Fury, Nick Fury, and everything. You know, seems to be back in who he is. But but we've yeah, seen no, that in this in this in this show as well. We've seen we've seen the flashback to a younger Fury. Yes, right. You know, so I I, I I'm still thinking the Marvels is going to be flashback stuff. But it, it I, might I be. would uh, we won't know until that time comes. Yeah, but I always keep that that door jar for those characters to come back in when they, I, they want to walk back into our lives. <laughs> I have another huge question that has been bothering me since the first episode. Good. And I want somebody to explain this to me. How do their clothes change? When they, when the scrolls change, their clothes change. Cause in that, that is true. That, in that restaurant scene, when all those scrolls get up and they all change it to look like graphic, 
They all have the exact same Gravit clothes on. And then when they go back to their regular, they have clothes. How do their clothes change? Not sure. That's Not a good sure. question. That's a really great question. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Disney Marvel, if you have an answer for that, please let us know. <laughs> I'm just because the only <laughs> other person that was able to do that was Mystique in the Fox right right movies that we and had. I just, I, it's just it's just was bugging me, and it was especially prevalent in this episode because, like I said, in that restaurant scene when all those other scrolls turn into Gravik, they all have the same costume. So they all look exactly alike, like Gravik, and they go back to being their regular people with their regular clothes on. So yeah. needs to help me out. Do they have yeah. some sort of technology? I don't know. But, Who knows? Well, uh, well, then again, there's that shield technology they use. Remember when Black Widow posed as somebody else? She had the mask thing. Yeah. It, and it, we had that I, also in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier with uh, uh, Sharon Carter. Yeah, no, I, I, and I totally see that. But that's one person. This is like an entire group of people. Yeah, true. You know, so anyway, it just was it's just been bugging me since the first or second episode. I was just maybe the clo- maybe the clothes are part of them. Well, meaning like <laughs> the, the clothes is like actual skin that's just mimicking clothes. I don't know, man. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> okay, listen. well that would mean they're naked. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> listen, no, good enough. <laughs> it's you know in the end it's comics it is <laughs> comics. Exactly. That's yeah, exactly. i don't want to think too we hard to, about it we, just... we have to uh yeah we have to Sus- suspend, suspend our disbelief yeah yeah, like yeah. jason uh, usually says <laughs> yeah. An- another thing another thing for me and i remember when i saw when i watched episode three the first time um and i don't in the subtitles just say man when uh, Fury's wife is talking on the phone, but it's very clearly Don Cheadle's voice. Like I've been watching the Yonder, Wonder Years, so mm-hmm. I've heard his voice a lot because he narrates the new reboot of the Wonder Years. Oh, that's right. That's I very, forgot about that's that. That's very clearly <laughs> Don Cheadle's voice. Like they didn't even try to disguise it at all. And that's very no, clearly Don Cheadle on the phone with her. And I'm just like, just just admit to us that it's Rhodey. Like, just tell us. <laughs> just, just, we're going to find out. We're going to find out in the next episode that for sure, yeah, it is. But uh uh, and then, like, they're going to hit us over the head with it in the next episode. So, well, I, I, I noticed a lot about uh, how Rhodey is talking within this particular, uh, look, within the past three episodes. Like, you know, I'm talking four, three, and two. Mm-hmm, it's right. not the way that we know that Rhodey speaks. Yeah. And I, right away, I'm like, well, that's not Rhodey. So, right, right, that's the reason why I was saying that it's like, it, he's got to be a scroll. How long has he been a scroll? Right now, during the time, and I watched honestly, I've been out on Workman's Comp for a while, and I got to I, I think I watched Infinity War into Endgame at least a good three times total through back <laughs> to back. Now, right. what scroll in their right mind would be on camera going canopy, 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 and then everything open up and he has to crawl with his arms to get himself through that rubble when he realizes I'm not being seen. I could just get up and walk. So I don't think it was at the time of end game that, uh, like after end game that, right. That yeah, he no, turned I, into I think, a scroll. I think they're going to show that it's been, at least for Rhodey, it hasn't been very long. It had to be like a, at least a, a year or two. Yeah. I wouldn't say because we're, we're talking, we're, with the Marvel Cinematic Universe right now, we're in the future. We're we're not even in present time for us. Yeah, what it's it should be like twenty twenty five or twenty six, something like that. Twenty six or twenty seven at this okay. point. Yeah, okay. because it was five years with the five year blip, and that was from twenty seventeen, right? Correct. Twenty eighteen. Yeah. So twenty twenty two or twenty twenty three. Yeah. Yeah. And then add a, f- a couple of years in between of what we have to deal with. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm thinking, okay, this is interesting. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, I'm like, I, I really think it's only been about maybe a couple of years. But uh, the one thing we didn't really touch on, which is the last point I we should really discuss on this particular episode, mm-hmm. is uh, how we find out that, uh, you know, Priscilla slash Vara is uh working with graphic at the very end because she goes to the correct you know the safety deposit box and there's a gun there and Mm -hmm. she you know we know right away that she's working with graphic and then she gets the phone call from don Cheadle. yeah Uh, Yeah. the only other thing i that i didn't notice until the second the second episode 
is mm-hmm. it because the first the first the like, first time I watched episode three, it kind of this line or this exchange kind of confused me. But then the second time I watched, it, I realized, oh, because they abort the mission to shoot down the United Nations plane. And when it gets back to Gravik that the mission was aborted, mm-hmm. he says he says something like, well, that wasn't the primary mission. The primary mission was to find the traitor. And that's how we that's how he realizes that Gaia was the traitor is because that's the only way right. they could have gotten that information was from her. And so uh, that's why he kills her there at the at the end of episode three. But uh, I didn't catch that. I didn't really understand that fully until the second the second time through that I went, oh, OK. So the plane was really not the, shooting down the United Nations plane wasn't really the primary mission. Mm. It was really trying to find the traitor. So, yeah. But if if it would have gone, if it would have been successful, he still would have been extremely happy about that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, sure yeah, it would have yeah. bothered him, you know, yeah. but it, it would have muddied the waters with who the traitor is. So, yeah. <laughs> all right well uh that was kind of quick coverage from episode i do have three. one more quote from episode three that i thought was really cool sure. was when talos when talos and gravik are talking uh one of the things uh, gravik says something about uh i'm gonna kill them you know don't talos tells him not to kill innocence and gravik says something about how he's gonna keep going and keep pushing and this was talos's line i thought it was really cool you don't understand the first thing about humans they're at their they're at their most formidable when they're threatened by a common foe. Hmm. So I thought that was I thought that was a really cool when they're threatened. They're at their most formidable when they are threatened by a common foe. Yeah, when they're backed in a corner. I mm-hmm. thought that, right. Yeah. When there's nothing to lose. Yeah. That we are. And we we've shown that over <laughs> centuries. <laughs> yep. Even to ourselves. Uh we have yet to get that with the uh, otherworldly being all yeah. right well, well let's... <laughs> before yeah. we go the other thing i mean and I, I i don't recall if you guys mentioned this but a lot of nick fury's uh mcu reputation was earned by talos and the scrolls yeah that's right. what we were so, discussing that's yeah, why so... talos and him had that conflict it's right, because right. his career was based upon what he brought the scrolls in to do for him as espionage spies to get him all that clout, right. have ears on the floor to different people. That's how he knew about Stark. That's how he about how he knew about everybody else. I wouldn't be surprised if it went all the way back to Black Widow, as well as Clint Barton, and everything else when it came to bringing the Avengers in. Well, they do. I mean, that's what that's. I think uh, don't they mention something like that? That somehow they they yeah. help getting the Avengers together or something Correct. like that. Right. So it's interesting, like, you know, now that they're going to when they said that, that, you know, Nick Fury got help from, you know, from the scrolls, I honestly felt like, oh, so you're kind of <laughs> how can I say you're you're bringing mm-hmm. Nick Fury like several steps down mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. now it's like, oh, so Nick Fury is not a badass as he, you know, as you may think. It's just that, you know, the scrolls have he been had, helping him. Yeah, right, he had this spy network. He had this network of spies that could be anyone. And yeah, it kind of does take him down a little bit. But I think, I, yeah, I can see it. So, it yeah, pegs I him, mean, yeah, it pegs him down a notch in a sense. But the the comment that we do get in the next episode from his wife in a discussion on a phone, she sees this as a newer nick fury that is very similar to the way he was before and i find it very very interesting like you know but that was before they have like a key conversation but uh yeah we'll 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 move right along because i i think it kind of segues into that right Mm -hmm. and and we're discussing episode four which is called beloved and the synopsis for this is Fury must make some hard sacrifices. I just love how it's just like one sentence. <laughs> yeah. <in> synopsis. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this one was interesting and in, in especially watching it today, uh watching it twice today was was kind of it's it's the it's very short. It's only 35 minutes. Yeah. So I think it it must be the shortest one of it all is. of them, but it right. has it has this amazing action sequence that we'll talk about at the end, I'm sure. But, oh yeah. 
but it was i i it, again it was it revealed some things and it left some things open and uh give us some more questions and we'll have to see what happens yeah right well, well i mean the the beauty of it was that it it revealed that one um nick fury never knew that his wife was a scroll or at least from what it makes it seem was like he did have a real wife or something like that. No, no, no. She explained that, that she explains that whole thing in the long game when she's, when she's taught, when he comes into the, the, the cafe, right. In 2012. Yes. And and he meets her and she says, um, in Paris, this is the one in Paris. And she, and he, and she, he says, uh, he's waiting for someone. And she says, well, what does she look like? And he goes, well, that depends on what week it is. He already knew she was a scroll. Yeah, he, he and, already okay. knew. Yeah. And then and then she says that she specifically picked this person because she knew it was the right like she was playing the long game. This is one of my points. So we'll just I'll just go straight. She in. actually she talks was, about that and he says it's the long game. You were in right. there from the very beginning. Right. From the very get, beginning. Right. When you know. she took over that when she took over that woman's life, she says I, I made her three promises. The first one was to bury her at sea, which I yeah. did. The second was to continue to be a daughter to her parents. And Fury says, which you also have done. And the third one was to never hurt Fury because Fury or her beloved, which yeah, literally, my, uh, Steve, this is where you would say, because it's like a mic drop. Mic drop. <laughs> yeah. Several times, several times in this episode, they, they said beloved because that poem. But uh, but yeah, she she was all the way back from 2012. She was one of his network of spies because that's why in that's why in the quote that I had where she says, well, I don't technically work for you because our unit doesn't technically exist. Yeah. You know, cause he says station right. chiefs can't, can't be with their people. And she's like, well, I'm not actually your people because we don't exist. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So he knew from the beginning that she was a scroll. And cause that's why she asked him that question. Um, after the whole shooting scene, she asked him, would you still love me if I was my true self? And he doesn't answer, but he walks out saying, I guess we'll never know. And then he just yes. walks out. Yeah, th- so. there's more to that that scene too, that's involved, which is because, uh, like I stated in the very beginning too, when we got the reveal of her, we see her cooking as a scroll, and then she changes mm-hmm. once he walks in. Right. So that that, that, that made us question whether whether he knew or not. But I, and I think... we know that he knew. It's just that he prefer. I think she realized he preferred her looking that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and oh, just appeasing oh, absolutely. him. Absolutely. So, or she assumed because I yes. mean, if that's the case, then he she never gave him an option or said, hey, or maybe had him walk in on her one day, you know, looking like a full scroll and see how he reacts or something like mm. that. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see if that ever. Yeah, it's right not up. easy being green. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, but the. We'll we'll get into a little bit more discussion later on within that conversation because that really between Fury and Thara slash Priscilla was a, mm-hmm. a very genuine conversation and was very dramatic and very good. Uh, that the, was a great scene. Yeah, great scene. It was, and I just love the layout of the house too. Uh, I don't know if you picked up on a lot of the things that were there, but I thought they were very good on the set decorations. Mm-hmm. But with me in the very beginning of the movie, uh, movie, <laughs> the episode, they, we see Gaia, she gets up, mm-hmm. she, she's obviously alive and she has the extremist power in her and she's able to self heal. Yeah. So, uh, that's a, a great reveal. And unfortunately- I love that montage, that whole montage they showed us that we didn't see in episode two or episode three you know when she gets the information about the what, what the uh what the password would be and mm. she tells it to talos and then we just see her leave but we don't get to see the in between we have this montage of her going into the lab turning on the 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 machine to make her super you mm, know right. and uh we go oh now we understand why it took her so long and that's why that's probably why it took her so long and why graphic was able to catch up with her was because she didn't just because Talos tells her to run. He yeah, says, okay, right. you give me the password. They're gonna know you're the traitor. You need to run. And but yet she stops and does this little maneuver thing and uh to give us more Amelia Cart. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I guess but I, have, I guess the question is, is that I well, I mean the fact that she changed herself, is mm-hmm. it a 
permanent thing or is it a temporary thing? I think it's a permanent thing. Honestly, I think, yeah, I, I would think it's. I, I think, it's like a gene think, splicer or uh, what did they call it back in with Spider Man? Something Collider, and right. yeah. they use that. And I think that's how they explain Sandman. I think it's the same thing. It it splices genes together, so they're getting all these these genes from these uh, samples that they got from, let's say, Groot, because these are Groot. Uh, right. Uh, Colipsidian, uh, the Frost Giant, and Extremis. From what right. we know, there's there's probably more that we don't know about. I would laugh if somebody actually has uh, Peter Parker. I think, I think what, what you're saying is because she changed because when he shot her, she changed into her scroll form. Mm. I don't I don't know if that was a conscious thing or just because of the trauma. I think it's of, because of the of trauma. Getting, I think so too because at the end, you know at Towards the end, when uh, Talos gets shot, he starts. He can't maintain. He's like half his, a scroll. He's yeah, like he half can't maintain there it. and half uh-huh. human. And then you know that that was uh, that was a really good scene altogether too, with the mm-hmm. action involved and the way they were able to portray it too, because uh, of how Fury reacted and the other uh, federal agents that were there that that listened to Fury. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that that was a good scene as well. Uh, I just love the fact that we, you know, all right, we we still got Gaia. There's still a chance to have Maria Hill back. For for all we know, maybe she was a Skrull herself, and she just didn't die. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And maybe she had that stuff inside her all along, and there's a different Maria Hill somewhere. Maybe. maybe. But that's wishful thinking. But uh, I I just love the uh, the scene between Fury and Rhodes, or the Scroll Rhodes that we see right. that gets out of the shower. Who I'm sorry when they put a towel over their chest, that <laughs> is a woman. Usually, and by the feet and look of the facial and the hands, that looked like a woman, a female Scroll, and then so right. changed to Rhodes. So and I hadn't thought about that. Could have been. And and on top of that, I, I just love the conversation of like even when that scroll was talking to Vara in the church, and I it's, and, and explaining how they fired Fury. Mm-hmm. I DDT'd him off the top rope like that, like, like the Undertaker. Yeah, <laughs> you know that that conversation, that quote. I'm like. All right, Rhodey doesn't really talk like that. <laughs> but, yeah, it was like it was like when when they like in my first note for this one is all caps. Rhodey is a scroll is <laughs> all caps with exclamation point um, because they really wanted to hit us over the head. Okay, if you didn't if you didn't figure it out when he called her and told her to meet him at the church, if you didn't yeah. figure it out when he was in the church talking very uh, un Rhodey like to her yeah. then we're gonna sh- we're gonna literally show you him change from a scroll into roadie exactly right. especially it's- when he's uh, they say to vara enjoy your concert they're in a church and there's gospel music going on yeah yeah it's and like just, all, right, all right that that's not a human thing to say it's like enjoy your concert it's not a concert case, this it, is church like it, <laughs> it's like the writers and, and or let's say okay in case anybody hasn't figured this out yet we're gonna make it Totally clear to you. <laughs> We're gonna bonk you over the yeah, head. <laughs> that Rhodey is a scroll, and I love that Pappy Van Winkle. I just finished a, a rewatch of Justified, yeah, and uh, they they talk about that Pappy Van Winkle bourbon a lot in there. So, wow, is that a real thing? It is. It's a super expensive, yeah, five thousand really, dollars a bottle. Apparently, mm-hmm. some of it thirteen thousand dollars a bottle, a thousand, over a thousand dollars a bottle. Yeah, twenty three years age. I looked it up before uh, before we uh, got online here because I wanted to see if it was a real thing. Because, like I said, I just. Finish justified, and they talk about Pappy Van Winkle in there yeah. all the time. So yeah, yeah no, it, it is. Yeah, if everybody remembers with when, when we covered Jessica Jones, Steve does know his bourbon. He does know a his, his, his a little alcohol. Bit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is like I. That's like wow, that's expensive. Yeah, yeah. the The other thing that that Rody says in that uh, exchange in the hotel room is he says, "Now get out of here before I defenestrate your." behind or whatever he says yeah. i had to look it up i didn't know what defenestra- defenestration is being thrown out a window hmm. that's what that's what that word means i had to look it up because i was just like defenestrated what is that what does that mean and so i had to look it up it's being thrown out a window huh. okay. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know where the root word comes from or how it it, it is but there you go 
and I love the liquid tracking thing that he jokes with with it, with him about putting liquid trackers in the in the bourbon, and then of course that's oh, how they that's find right. it. That's what that's what uh, I didn't figure that out until the second watch that I heard him say liquid tracking, uh, and then later on Talos is like liquid tracking, huh? Mm. And then they see the explosion with the caravan. The uh, yeah, the car yeah. is getting tapped. Well, let's go back. I'm not saying to go back to the conversation, but about mm-hmm. Fury and uh, and Vera slash Priscilla. Mm-hmm. Uh, the conversation was very sweet, very innocent, uh, very honest of how he disappeared. She came back. It's literally about their their whole life together at that point. Right. And. It, it got to a point where it's like he tells her to take her gun out. He knew that because he was listening in over the conversation, mm-hmm. but he had bugged then, her somehow. They never show us how he bugged her, but apparently he must have bugged her in some way or he bugged the house or yeah. or something. So, and you could tell it's like they, they were playing together as best they could, but she was living up to the rules of being that, that love that Priscilla, the uh, Priscilla Davis, I think her name is mm-hmm. the doctor uh, that gave her life to Vara to become, to encounter love and then having that life and having her life live on yeah. with her being as, as her. And, you know, obviously it was one thing is like, you know, not to break Fury's heart or, you know, just to love him as is. Right. But yeah, I thought it was very true and you can understand there's an endearing factor in it and it is very respectful. Uh, she still does love and care for him and I believe he still feels the same way. So I don't think this is a character we could just cast aside later on. I oh think. yeah. I just, I love that, that moment, you know, when they're reciting that poem again from that first, that date when they were, yeah. uh, and they're reciting that poem again there at the end and right at the end, they both recite it together and shoot almost at the same time. Yeah. And they both miss. Right. And then I, I love, you know, what, what was Fury's line? I didn't write it down, but his Fury, Fury's line was, well, I guess that either means we need to get divorced or renew our vows. Yep. That's right. exactly but, it. I have it here. Yeah. Well, the, the uh, funny thing is, is that that scene just reminds me something out of like Mr. And Mr. Mr. And Mrs. Mm-hmm. Smith. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was like uh, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. Yeah, so, no, I don't yeah. think I don't think they miss. I think they I think they missed on purpose. They did. Right. No, that, I I totally. You know, that's what I mean. I think they missed on right. purpose. Yeah, right. yeah. And somebody shot one of those Greek statue faces. Yeah, that's yeah, on I, the I, wall. And notice yep. how they were Greek god statues mm-hmm. or faces that were on the wall. And then they had a lot of African American, um, uh, like pictures and. Mm-hmm. books and everything else there was actually an award in the back for uh, a doctorate for her mm, being priscilla okay. davis right. as well just right. to point that out so yeah. it's not like she wasn't playing the character or that that person or stopped playing it after the blip she mm-hmm. kept being who that woman wanted to be yeah i hope i hope we get some more of her but i'm not sure because you know he gets up to walk out and he says they'll be coming for you and she says, I'll be ready or something like that. Because remember, Gravik said, one of you is not going to walk out of that house. Correct. And so I, I'm a, I'm afraid we might not see her again, but who knows? She might. Who knows? I mean, you know what? You know, you know how it is. Either either they get to her, kill her. And of course, that makes Fury, you know, mad, mm-hmm. mad and become, you know, the old Fury or whatever it is. Yeah. Or she just, you know, all of a sudden helps and, you know, defeat. The other scrolls. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't we'll think see. she's. We I don't got think two she's episodes gone. left, so we well, have two you episodes. Never know. They might put the lethal weapon moment on to us and make Fury turn into uh, Riggs and start <laughs> going after people right. and shooting, going after yeah. the woman. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. But uh, I, I thought the, a really cool scene, and this is obviously the finality of it. Uh, this would be. Uh, President Ritson, and I got it right because I kept calling him Rickson. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, and the convoy and him being attacked by Gravix people acting as like Russians. I still believe that this is their attempt to get the president and have somebody become the president. 
I don't think so. I think I think they were trying to kill him. I think they were trying to assassinate the president and making it seem like the Russians, the Russians were, were doing it. The Russians were doing okay. That's what I think. I could be wrong. You could be right. They want to put somebody in place as the president, but I think it would be a I think it would be better for what Gravik's plan is. Yeah. You know, because his plan is to destabilize the world. Well, what Correct. would be more destabilizing than to, to assassinate the American president from by Russians assassinating the American president? That's like Get my words in the right order. Causing all out war, basically. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Which is That's what, what he I'm... wanted to do in the in the third episode with the submarine, with, you know, and um right, the United Nations to, plane. Right, the United Nations plane. Mm-hmm. So yeah, his his plan is just to destabilize Hopefully, even start World War Three if he can. Mm-hmm. Because I think remember, that's, the scrolls can idea. actually uh, live uh, through radiation. Live through mm-hmm. radiation, so that means yeah. that if they wipe themselves out, mm-hmm. even if the entire you know planet is radiated, guess what? They have a new home. Yep, correct. So they've got their new home. Yep. I just think that when Talos was uh, telling uh, you know Gaia about you know oh the humans you know we we do this and we show them we have a bargaining chip, and I'm saying to myself. You still don't know humans, do you? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It will never. I mean, I don't think. I mean, I know in our world here, but I mean, even in that comic book world, I don't think they will ever accept the scrolls for many reasons, even though like, you know, people could say, well, you know, Asgard, you know, they, they let all these Asgardians stay in uh, in Norway mm-hmm. It's a right. new Asgard, but it's like, yeah, but those look human and they are, you know, and they don't change. Right. They to look have human a bunch, and right, and to have not a, a bunch million of, of them. To have so. an entire race that could be chameleons mm-hmm. that will make that will make humans suspicious of everybody around them. Oh, we already yeah. had a little bit of that issue in She Hulk, if you remember. Right. When the elf from Asgard was uh trying to be oh I forgot her name Megan uh De Stallion Stallion yeah Megan De Stallion uh, and yeah. and she fooled the uh, the one lawyer into <laughs> paying for her car yeah and giving her all these gifts and everything and yeah. and he found it but uh yeah what uh, if you look at what T- Talos's point of view is he still wants to live amongst the humans in hiding. And be one among them. Whereas uh, Gaia sides a little bit with Gravik in trying to be a bit of their own and have their own world. Kind of almost like you're saying with New Asgard and having Mm -hmm. their own land. Gravik is onto the extremist or like since he's already got it in his system now, extremist. Mm -hmm. he, He wants to destroy the human species. So they could take over the planet Earth mm-hmm, exactly, and, and utilize it for what their needs. Uh, it's pretty much the typical alien taking over Earth for to reap its rewards because we screwed up our own world. Mm-hmm. And then they would have to make a call to their other people, like kind of like the Decepticons calling out, coming down to Earth after we've taken know, over I, Earth, you know? I don't know. They really haven't. They haven't talked much about I mean. Talos talked a little bit about that emperor and yeah. that there were people that were still back there. But I really think Gravik is more just inclusive of we're going to people gonna, in general that he has. The, the, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the ones the, the million that are here, that's all we're going to worry about. We don't we don't we're not going to worry about the ones that are already been conquered. I yeah. think anyway, I, I, I think he's really concentrating on we're going to make this world for us for not for scrolls everywhere for just scrolls that are here. Right. But who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Exactly. Yeah. Who uh, knows? <laughs> that that uh that that attack on Ritson while he was in the truck. Wow. That reminded me out of something out of Iron Man One. He was definitely not in the fun V. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it really reminded me of that. It was it the first episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier where they have that, that huge aerial battle and oh, yeah. you have all these flying flying around. I thought that was it was I think I'm going to go out on a limb. I think this is the biggest action sequence we've seen from one of these MCU, even from Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I don't think there was anything this big involving this many explosions, this many people, this many. You're vehicles. talking I mean, about a, uh, a, a physical a, stunt. No, no, but I'm talking well, about no, like well, it, you're talking about like Disney Plus series because right. the movies I've always had. A oh, lot. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, right. no I'm, I'm not. Yeah, no, I'm right. talking in TV in the TV shows that we've had. This mm-hmm. is like the biggest action sequence we've had 
I mean, that I can think of. It was huge. I mean, you got explosions going on. You get guys getting shot, people getting killed, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Fury and, and Talos and then that Talos banging on that, that bulletproof glass. He was to relentless at doing that just to tr- get to Ritson. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the, the funny thing is, is that I love the, the, the one scene when the agents show up saying, you know, they knew that Fury was in charge. And they look to go, alien, we got to shoot it. It's like, kill it, kill it. Like the, right, uh, anything right. typical that uh, humans would do, especially this day and age. If we see an alien, just kill it. But they, uh, and then Fury reassures them and they wind up protecting him. And, and mm-hmm. then he gets Ritson out of there. And then we get the whole, uh, oh, within that scene too, we see, uh, Gravic with group. Yeah, Gravic somehow arms. switched places switched places with one of those guys. I don't know how they didn't show us how he did that or when he did that, but apparently Gravic switched places with that guy because that's what he kills. Yeah, he, Talos, he basically so. switched. Yeah, he kind of snuck in as that particular uh agent or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. I guess my only problem with that scene was the fact that when it happened, when you see Gravix and all of a sudden stabs uh Talos. Mm-hmm. The agents in the back, you would think at least one of them would also notice and start shooting, you know, uh, his way. Mm-hmm. And they're just, you know, like just ignoring everything that's going on and just shooting the other way, which I understand, you know, there's a big firefight. But I don't know. It just seemed like if, you know, all of a sudden one person turns into another there should have been more guys with Fury on the president. It shouldn't have been just Fury. Right. I, I, you know, there would have been more guys in that area who would have seen Talos get picked up by this unknown soldier, you know, and I'm with you. That's now that you bring that up. I, I think that is that is that well, not is only that, a, but whenever the Secret Service is with the president, um, I don't give a fuck that it is Nick Fury. <laughs> the Secret yeah. Service sole job is to protect the president. So that means they wouldn't just let Fury take him. Correct. Yeah. They will go with the president. Period. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that's they didn't do that. that. You know, so yeah, that I was totally the part that I thought it was a little bit of disconnection. I was like, no, nah, if it's the president of the United States, trust me. I mean, it would have mm-hmm. been a it shitload would've... of you know, uh, yeah. Secret Service people just yeah. trying to protect them or get uh, as a matter of fact, just become human shields if they right. have to. Very yeah. true. Yeah, there, there, there should have been more guys around, especially when, when Fury goes, oh, no, no, I've got my own car. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> but of course, it gives us the cliffhanger of him, which, by the way, another suspension of disbelief, that car survived that entire firefight without getting a scratch on it. Yeah, oh, of <laughs> course. It's, a, it's left of course, over shield tech. <laughs> it's Nick Fury's car. So, uh, but yeah, so then we get our, our, uh, our uh, you know, our cliffhanger that uh, Fury drives off with the president in his. Uh, right. Yeah, where are they gonna go? The the one takeaway that I did enjoy side. about that particular scene though is when Fury is there, Talos keeps going at it after he's shot, but you could see half of him as scroll mm-hmm. and the makeup and the CG combination because you know is mostly practical as well as the CG kind of more right. out, mm-hmm. and it was done very well. I think they got the money right when it came to actually mixing it in comparison to uh certain movies that we got over the past year <laughs> well that's why you can't that's why you couldn't have any more you know any more celebrities in this because <laughs> just, the effects were taking too much money they're like listen we can only afford two <laughs> yeah. okay yeah. Don Cheadle and uh and uh and Samuel L. Jackson so <laughs> and Amelia Clark as well yeah and Amelia her. Clark oh well, yeah. she, she, she she hasn't done much but okay yeah <laughs> uh, well Except for that one scene when she got shot, but that's about it. But yeah, I think we're no, gonna get I mean, more before her. this. She hasn't really done much. I I would say in the in terms of uh, work, I think. Right. I mean, you got Game of Thrones was really, and she was Sarah Connor, and yeah, Ter- she was Terminator Genesis. Yeah. So that was like, <laughs> yeah. wasn't I'm that before Rob, uh, Game of Thrones? Was it? I don't think so. I think it was during it. I think it might have been during. I don't remember, but uh, you're okay. right. I mean, she hasn't done a lot of stuff to where she would be big. She was on a sci-fi channel movie at one point too, which is really right. Bad. I mean, I know that she has some. Uh, I know she has some health problems at one at one point. Yeah, she and had a brain, right. almost like a brain aneurysm at one point, and she survived. Mm-hmm. It got bless her. Yeah, but, so 
Yeah. yeah, but I think it I think it was something else. I'm not sure. I could be wrong, but I think it was something else. And she was just taking time for herself, which she definitely has the right to do that. I mean, she has yeah. to take care of herself first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just again, you know, I, I think for me, it's getting like the series is getting better. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just wish there were more of soup. Um, I just wish there was some superheroes Supers. involved. Yeah, right. Where now that was you know, my last. Yeah. Rhodey is Rhodey itself again. It's a secondary, a tertiary character in yeah. the MCU. Correct. And this is as big as you, you know. And then they they replaced him, so that was their kind of like their way of saying, okay, we replaced one of the Avengers, right? right? But I wish that you know, I don't know, God, just even if it was like for five minutes, I don't for care. A cameo, yeah, five you minute know, cameo. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay tony stark or you know i wouldn't be tony i I would say captain marvel oh that's right tony stark is dead but captain marvel well yeah captain i don't know whoever is sam (laughs) yeah sam who is uh falcon or yeah captain america now that's right so yeah you got a bucky you have uh wanda you have you know you have at least a few of them you have ant-man Whatever it is, I mean, you would think that Fury would use his contacts to, hey, we need to get, especially once they see that there's super scrolls. That was my last note from episode four was who's going to be able to fight these, who in this show to is going to be able to fight the super scrolls except each other. That's it's that's why I said I think it's Amelia Clark. It's going to be. Yeah, of course. Because because again, they're, they're You have to understand they they can't. I've always said from the very beginning, I said this should have been an Avengers event movie. Mm-hmm. Where now you have super scrolls, or you have scrolls that are acting as superheroes, and then you have real superheroes, and then you can have another, like, you know, another like end game type of battle that way. Yeah. Which that's how it was in the comic books. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. here, it's like you were saying, Steve, the only way that they're going to actually be able to fight graphics is by having a Miller Clark, you know, character yeah. fight him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's yeah. that's that's the only thing I can see. I, I I think for the show itself, they're going to try to reduce that down. I don't think this is over by the end of this particular season. I, I have a not. funny feeling it'll probably well, leak into the MCU itself, and then we will get what you're thinking, Rob. And then I mean, we'll, they have that whole you know Kang thing happening. Although who knows now? But well, <laughs> we the have MCU, no writers yeah, to the, rewrite it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There are no writers or actors now, so yeah. we don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be people. It's going to be fan cat. Yeah, you know, it's going to be the what is it? Fans making their own movies. Fan yeah. fiction. <laughs> fan fiction, right there. Fan <laughs> fiction. Actually, we're we, you know what? That's what we should do. That's an idea. We should film our own movies. <laughs> <laughs> as cheap as they are, it's better than the reruns that you know people are going to get for the f- next few months. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Somebody's going to make a movie about Nick Fury. Call it Nick Fury Roads. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nick Fury and Roads. I, it would be funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> boom, boom. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, I think we, uh, yeah, well, well, we all said it that this episode ended on a cliffhanger. Um, you know, Talos gets stabbed by Gravik. He's left alone. You got Fury, he has written in his car. That's how we're left off. We don't know what that cliffhanger is going to hold. We won't know until next Wednesday. So, yeah, that, that's what we're left off with. But those are, uh, are pretty much our thoughts, I think, mm-hmm. on this particular episode. Uh, I have no m- further quotes. I think uh, we quoted the hell out of what yeah. we <laughs> needed. Uh, I don't have any other notes either. So if you I'm guys have any- out. All right. No, I'm good. <laughs> All right, so with that, uh, we'll move right in. We did get some feedback, but this is a friend's kind of feedback. Uh, this is from Derek O'Neill from uh, TV Podcast Industries, who we love. And they're actually covering Secret Invasion 2 on their podcast as well. So uh, he says, great to hear your thoughts on Secret Invasion. It's great. You're enjoying it so far. Just a note, Olivia Coleman plays British MI6, Sonia Falsworth, not Shirley. Thank you. Derek, for pointing that out, yes, I, uh, maybe I had airplane the movie on my head, and I thought everybody was called Shirley, uh, but thank you for correcting me on that, <laughs> and it's great to listen to you guys too as well. 
I, I yeah, they do I've, a great. Yeah, they have a great podcast. Yeah, I have to uh, just to plug a little bit uh, for uh, TV podcast industries. Uh, they got a lot more going on too. By the way, I think they're covering The Witcher. <laughs> Full thing too. <laughs> Are they doing both The Witcher and Secret Invasion? I, have I, not I think so. Them. I yeah. don't know. But uh, listeners, you could uh, go check them out and their thoughts on that as well. They've been around a lot longer than we have. Yeah. All right. So uh, we'll just move right along into some news that's out there. So the WGA strike is still going on, but it's really affecting the writers. Now, uh, something was recently published and John Campia on his YouTube actually mentioned it. Somebody published it stating how with uh, it was some sort of CEO or somebody that stated that they wanted to see the writers suffer to the point of losing their apartments or their houses until this uh, until they could come to a settlement. And honestly, I think that is really just nasty. Yeah, I, I really think that's just like you're trying to put people out of house and hold, but because you want to stand to it. And a lot of people are pointing it to uh, more streaming content because Netflix, as we know, doesn't want to pay the residuals out, which sucks. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, they, they literally just pay a streaming service and they get paid a little bit on it and that's about it. Uh, and then, uh, but if something is on video and this calls back to what Rob would love to talk about, which is Blu-ray 4k Blu-ray anything of movies and that content or even tv they get residuals on anything that comes from that uh physical medium as well and that's why i i always you know i back you up rob on this that physical medium is very much important because you know one day you could turn around you already paid a license on let's say itunes or amazon or something and they pull that and you don't have it there Mm-hmm. Well, not only that, but it's the fact that a lot of people have basically just kind of sworn off not only physical media, but even probably buying digital media because they think, oh, I could stream everything. I'm already paying Correct. for, you know, for a subscription per month. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's out there and they don't realize, you know, HBO, Disney, Mm-hmm. Uh, all these, all these different, even all Disney these, Plus. Yeah, they have pulled a ton of shows out because mm-hmm. of that. You know, they know that hey, we have to pay residuals to some of these people, yeah. so let's not, you know, give them a chance for that. I also heard about a writer for a show that he got his residuals for. You know, this was like years ago, mm-hmm. and it was like a twelve thousand dollar check, but with like Netflix, it was it was a four dollar check. Mm. You know, from twelve thousand to four dollars, you know that is insane. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of people have you know seen already the the Fran Drescher speech that she gave, mm. where she really came down on this whole thing, and she basically said, you know, you pay hundreds of millions of dollars to the CEOs, you know, because of course the studios are claiming, oh, you know, we're uh, they're almost claiming poverty. And she's like, how the fuck are you claiming poverty when, you know, <laughs> your CEO is mm-hmm. getting a hundred million dollars? Yeah. You know, so and it's true. I, it you is. Know, it's, it's sad. It's, it's always and it's been that way with any corporation where the CEO gets, you know, it happened. I remember years ago with the big, you know, financial uh, problems that we had, and like all these CEOs were also getting hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars and everybody else was just getting peanuts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So trust me, I feel for them because it's it sucks. You know, yeah. you got your A lister actors that honestly, you know, they could demand whatever money they want because, of course, they're A lister. But for people who are just working actors, yeah, like Sean Everett I mean, Scott, yeah. If you, you know, think the, about it, think about that that character actor. Not right. just to point a finger, but I'm just saying. The, those people are working actors, and we know some of those too, Rob. Uh, we've we've dealt yeah. with them in our professional uh, medium in home theater installation and things of that nature. Me being an installer, you being a salesperson, and these people thrive on getting those jobs. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and uh, that that is their source of income. Absolutely, which, which leads us to the SAG after strike that just like followed the WGA strike, yeah. and now they're having issues. And 
And that's they, what I meant by Fran Drescher because of the SAG, yes. you know, the whole SAG thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it just follows that. The, un, unfortunately, listeners, this this actually does affect us in a sense of us looking at new content coming our way, if not possibly being halted for another year or two. The last time we had the uh, the writer strike, it cost us a lot of TV shows and Correct. certain movies or delays of movies. Now with the the actors guild, they're the SAG after a guild. They're they're going to be like, nope, we're not doing anything. And they put no, a, Hollywood is shut down now. It, it's literally shut down to the point where they can't do anything. And our friend Ben Beck actually posted something about rules that that was sent to SAG after people who are on strike that what they can or cannot do. Literally, they can't do interviews for podcasts and and they can't do conventions. They, you know, uh, the the only way and loophole around them, because a lot of these people need to, you know, make their money as well for regular actors. uh, They they could go there for signings at a convention. They don't necessarily have to go there to promote past or present. They could literally just be there to sign autographs and take pictures and relish on what, you know, it, they could be pictures of work that they had done before, but they can't really talk about it. Mm. But, and that includes to the point of moderation of panels. And this is where I actually have to convey to those convention goers that are saying, hey, they're not allowed to do panels. Well, they can. There's a way around that. Don't talk about their work. Let's talk about them as a person. What are their likes? What are their other interests in this world? Let's get to know the actor as a person. You, that that would be the greatest way to actually moderate a panel. Let's get to know the actor as a person because we only see them and identify them with their work. Let's get to know them. Yeah, the problem with that is that, you know, no matter how much you say, let's get to know them as a, people are still going to try to ask them questions and stuff. True. Like this. I know. I know. You know and then, of course, definitely they want to know everything about, you know, what's going on. It's uh, just, they're they're at a point where they're shut and locked on. They're, that. they're just shutting everything down and shut, saying, you know what? Yeah. No. And here's the interesting thing. So like, you know, like so like a streamer like Netflix, mm-hmm. Netflix has enough content right now without putting anything out there that you could watch something new for the next six months and you should be fine. But after that, Mm -hmm. once everybody has watched everything they can, Mm. that's when shit is going to hit the fan. Other streaming services don't have the amount of content that Netflix has. Correct. Like Amazon. Yeah. Right. So they're already going to have, you know, problems, you know, on at least in that front. So this Uh, is why it's mm -hmm. crucial for you people to go to a convention Find those guys who have the DVD boots so you can find that cool Blu-ray of that show that you never <laughs> watched. Pay into it because San Diego Comic-Con at this point, because there's not going to be any media that's there. You might get a few celebrities doing, like I stated, signing autographs, doing photo ops. From what I hear, there's not going to be a single celebrity going out there. I I haven't heard that yet, but if that's the case, then I feel bad. Yeah, but we're we're there at that point where San Diego Comic Con is actually reduced to what it was originally, a Comic Con, and the mm-hmm. only media that will be there will be those uh, paper, cool, uh, <laughs> yeah, comics. Your uh, artist alley, go support your comic book artists, everybody. Yeah. So you know you could see Mr. Chris Claremont probably. You probably could go get to see Jim Shooter, uh, Joe Casada, Dan Slott pay into your comic love but uh you could also like i stated you they sell media there too so if there's a show that you can't find on amazon or on netflix or anything you'll definitely find it at a convention right give those people your money and do that definitely subscribe to that belief because i do because there's certain movies that i liked and i i think i brought that up on to your uh podcast rob when i said oh i got this cool blu-ray it's called sorority babes and slime bowl Bo- Bo- and <laughs> i remember that <laughs> and it's like from 1985 <laughs> or 1986 and I, he was like i never even heard of it i never so, did but... <laughs> so but the thing is i'm like into that kind of nostalgic kind of horror movies and and sci-fi and stuff like that 
where right. else are you gonna find like the old like Bruce Campbell movies that we uh that used to get in the nineties at the rental at Palmer Video or Blockbuster Video? But yeah, that's that's the place to go. Uh, give the Comic Con your money. I'd say continue to go. Uh, there will be for lower tiered as uh, as far as from what I heard from Sean Clark, who I've met numerous times and have talked to. He's a liaison to the to the celebrities that are out there and books them for conventions. He's allowed to. He's saying they have a job. So those who are dealing with nostalgic, let let's say uh, Rob, you know you. You and I both know somebody like uh, with uh, with somebody from Wings, and right. they they could do a convention. They could easily just do signings and photo ops. They don't necessarily have to promote past or re released whatever that's coming out or current projects. They could easily talk about whatever they want. Just like uh, you know, if he wanted to, he could talk about his YouTube channel that he did with his son. Tim Daly could actually easily do that. Uh, if I actually reached out to Kevin Smith on Twitter thinking, oh, he's in trouble. He can't do anything, but I forgot. I'm an idiot. He's a podcaster. He could do whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> so Kevin can do whatever he wants, even though he's a writer and actor. And same thing with Mark Bernardin, uh, even though Mark is press. But uh, I would say that anybody appearance, appearing for any of these things it, it, for like current promotion or promotion of something that's being re up by a studio, don't expect it. But right. go support those celebrities that are doing those conventions. Monster Mania is already people booked. That's coming up soon. And, and Cherry Hill and Maryland, as well as a few others. So go see them. You might not get any panels, but you get to see the celebrity interact with them, get an autograph, get a picture keep them doing what they do. But uh, the only f funny thing enough of how we get this seg after a strike going on now, the day before that, what did we get? And it's comic book related. We got Deadpool 3 promo stills of them fighting out on some sort of beach. <laughs> oh, yeah? And yeah, uh, you got Hugh Jackman and you got uh, Ryan Reynolds uh, stunt double doing a live action is some video on it. And this is not something that uh, they paid anybody to put out there or anything. It's just regular press and they were just doing a filming thing. So I think, you know, it, it's a it's a nice give us, you know, gimme to the, the fans out there that are looking forward to this. Yeah, I, too bad they got halted. You know that, right? Yeah, it got halted, yeah. but it, it, it's it's enough for us to salivate for a while until it comes back <laughs> into play. And I hope this uh, does subside. They were talking, we're three months into the WGA strike, and they're talking possibly a full six months. Yeah, they're talking about probably till uh, like possibly December. October, November, somewhere around there. Yeah. And then now that the SAG after people are there too, it's going to be hard. But once that, like you said, once that media is kind of used up, we're we're stuck. Yeah. He, but, get this. So another thing about the SAG, the whole SAG thing is that mm -hmm. uh, one studio or, or one executive said, or how is it that part of the deal was that then extra let's say you're an extra or something like that you remember extra makes what 180 bucks a day or something like that yeah so their whole thing is that what they want to do is scan you right and then they will actually own your image right the studio will own your image and so you get paid for the day when you get scanned or when you actually, you know, but they could use your image as like, you know, in the back for crowds and, and for anything without your consent. Hmm. And they don't have to pay you for it. I was like, who the hell would even try to agree to that? Nope. That is the most stupid thing I have ever heard. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's like signing off your 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 likeness rights and signing just signing saying agree, agree, agree. Yeah, yeah. And you got pay for it once, and that's it. So I uh, it just kind of stunned me this whole thing. I mean, with especially you know with the negotiations and what they're asking for and thinking that it's all um, unreasonable. And according to Bob Iger, it's like, well, you know, they're they're picking a wrong time to go on strike <laughs> and you know and it's like and, and honestly the film industry is having a hard time which you know we yeah. all know i mean there's been a lot of bombs and a lot of you know uh and i mean bombs in the in the box office um but there's just you know been a lot of failures that you know a lot of movies that just haven't made their money back and things like that so yeah, that's true and so Part of me, when he said that, I was like, while I understand that, but your fucking salary is still about $50 million a year. Yeah. All right. So if you want to show uh, any kind of heart, how about you say, you know what? For one whole year, I'm not going to get paid. Yeah. And that's it. You know, and you can solve this problem very, uh, very quickly. But mm. yeah, it's very unreasonable. Some of the things out there. So, yeah, if you come and actually if you live in los angeles or live in new york um you know what go support these guys on on the picket line you know and stuff yeah. like that um bring them water bring them something you know or just go out there and you know and just support them because they could really use that right now yeah you, if you really love your entertainment you love these people the entertainment that they provide please help out in any way you can right but uh, yeah, that that's what I have as far as uh, a way of news so far. But uh, like I said, the cool comic portion was well just before the strike. We got the whole Wolverine and his uh, red, uh, his blue and yellow suit. Yeah, and uh, we got. The question is, is he going to wear the 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 cowl? I would not be surprised if we get the cow on his head maybe twice and maybe two short scenes real quick. Him taking it off and then putting it back on. And that's it. <laughs> but honestly, I understand the point of view. And in, even in the cartoon at one point or even in the comics, Logan doesn't really have his mask on all that much. Right. If I had it on once, I'd be like, there he is. That's it. We got it on film. That I'll be happy with that. Plus uh, the idea of sleeves. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, because normally he doesn't have sleeves, and this he he has sleeves. Who knows? It, it might you know it might be one of those things that it gets ripped off, and all, next thing you know, something's gonna happen. Here's what I predict: something will happen that they will make Logan look exactly like in the comic books, at least in one scene. Hmm. All of a sudden, you're going to look at him and you're going to go, shit, that is directly straight out of the pages comic. of the comic book. Yeah. 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 And I, I just love it for the fact that we have a blue and yellow suit. Uh, that was my favorite. I actually have a statue of that. And right. I just love it. But and pe uh, people claim that it's all it's a suit that was in the in the uh, in the briefcase that they, you know, in that. Uh, that was the brown was, and that was the brown and uh, yellow or brown and orange or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So this one is just yellow and blue. This is like very similar to the very like Hulk his original one. Yeah, his original one. Yeah, except with the whiskers on it. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I wouldn't that... be I wouldn't be surprised if actually what is it? A uh, Deadpool puts whiskers on his mask on purpose just to make him look, you know, like just to like make it as a, make it as a prank. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and next Deadpool's, thing you know, yeah, Deadpool's uh, costume too. If you look at it, it's more traditional to the comic. It's more reddish, not maroonish. Right. So I, I think it's pretty cool. I, I'm just glad at what we got so far. We're teased. We're not supposedly not getting it until next year, but we'll see what happens with in the coming uh, months of with these strikes and how far things are delayed. But yeah, with that, that that's our uh, news when it comes to that. Now we're at the podcast point where uh, recommendations or where people could hear you. Uh, well, they could hear me on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, where we take movies that did not make it in the box office or with critics, and they were 
tentpole movies because there's a lot of movies out there that don't make it in the box office or quick critics but the big tentpole movies that lost money and stuff like that and we criticize the crap out of it and then of course we fan cast it and see uh you know if we can make it any better so that yeah. and we also do our also our movie drafts and i believe uh maybe by the time you release this we already would have recorded our next episode which is going to be on episode eight star wars uh episode eight mm. So that one's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, uh, obviously live steving. <laughs> yeah, I can be heard right here on, on Panels to Pixels. And then uh, I send in voicemails to various podcasts that our friends do. And they uh, indulge me to play them uh, on their podcast. And I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I live Steve. I, I, I give my comments as I go through the episode, what episode of TV, whatever it is, uh, the first time watching it. And uh it's uh it's 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 fun it's fun it's it's better than waiting till the end and trying to remember <laughs> all the things that i wanted to say so i just do it and it's I'm entertaining uh, i always love listening to it because it's like everybody uh, they're like what is steve gonna say <laughs> i didn't want to know it's like he said it dropped the yes. mic yeah it's awesome <laughs> thank you but thank you. uh yeah and uh hopefully in time we could actually get to that space camp podcast uh i i've been trying to get a bunch of people together so hopefully we could do that uh, and that could be found on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, where you could also hear me uh, coming up. Obviously, we already just finished. Uh, uh, it's already out. Uh, the thing from 2011 that uh, Jerry and I covered. That's con- that's right right out now. And uh, you could also hear coming up uh, a coverage of Big Trouble in Little China. That'll be actually put out with around the same time this is out. And then coming up will be uh the lost boys with our friend rima who is on uh strange indeed which is currently doing black mirror and uh that's on the podcast network when you hear strange indeed so strange indeed is covering black mirror you could hear rima joe on with me when we cover the lost boys on adrenaline cinema podcast where you could also hear me at as well uh, I was also on the cast of us and we talked about uh, the dead city episode. I think it was episode four. Yeah. Yeah. So four, you yep. could... Or three. Is it three it was four. four. Oh, it was four. Cause yeah. five just came out. So uh, you can hear me on that. Uh, me, Ben and Kelly were covering that. And Kelly, you could also hear on adrenaline cinema cause we covered aliens and we did speed as well. Uh, you could hear Mr. Ben Beck on Wilhelm as well. So he's got a, he's got a lot of content coming up, but he's also on uh, Lost. We have to go back nope. revisited. It's the re- it's it's they changed the name. It's revisited podcast. Thank you for correcting just, me because I'm sure Ben yeah. would have killed me. <laughs> <laughs> the revisited podcast <laughs> now covering Lost. Now covering Lost, and I think it's the the last season. There's just about finishing mm-hmm. up too. So yeah, very close, very close. So uh, and as always, uh, give some love to the podcast network and uh, for like Run for Your Lives, the cast of us, Yellow Jackets, WTF. Just go to podcastka.com. And obviously you can hear me and Rob on Parkour Entertainment. So uh, for any feedback like Derek had done, well, all you have to do is go to our Facebook group. That's how he sent it. So you just have to go to facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. We are on Twitter at panels, the number two pixels. Uh, We sometimes put stuff up there. Uh, We are on Instagram and that's panels to pixels podcast at panels to pixels podcast. Uh, If you would like to send an email, all you have to do is send out a regular texted email to panels Two pixels one at gmail.com. Panels two is spelled out to pixels and the number one at gmail.com. You just write out a lovely little, you know, little letter text uh, email if you want. And if you want to record yourself, you could easily do that and send it as an attachment. You could be part of the podcast as well and we'll play it. Uh, we could be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcast, or whatever podcast player of choice that you use. Uh, podcast is the most preferred player of choice as far as what I'm told. 
Uh, and also any sort of ratings or review that is available on Apple Podcasts gets us noticed a lot more. So if you could kindly do that, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, as of from what I've heard, uh, at the end of August, it will be no more Stitcher. So the Stitcher app is going away. So we've had is it really? Yeah, 15 years of Stitcher. So it's gone. So uh, uh, I would highly recommend you guys use uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or m- one of like maybe iHeartRadio or Amazon Music. That's right. out there. That's a shame. It is a shame. <laughs> yeah, because uh, they had a, re- a lot of original content, which makes me think I have to go back and find it and nab it because. I loved uh, the Christina Ricci as Harley Quinn. And that was an original content. They had an original content one about Wolverine, which was really cool, too. So these are like almost like audio dramas or radio dramas. That's the thing time. is that now podcasts are doing that a lot. Mm. So it makes it easy for um that content to be in multiple platforms as opposed to just be in one. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, nice shout out to Katie Sackoff, which is her new podcast called blah, blah, blah. Katie Sackoff. So check that out. She can be is found it really out. Ca- is it really called that? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. With Katie Sackoff. <laughs> <laughs> so check it out on YouTube. Why and didn't I think of that? <laughs> podcast players of choice. <laughs> Hiring and Christian Harloff are uh, on there. Uh, I got to listen to a uh, a really great interview with her and Bryce Dallas Howard, which was really cool because it's about Bryce Dallas Howard and how she is a director, actress, and how she supports a lot of women in the industry when it comes to uh, filmmaking and TV shows. Right. And uh, she gives a nice story of how she got to, to be in the M. Night Shyamalan movie. Uh, what was it? The woman in the water or something? I forgot yeah. the name of it. Yeah, something like Lady that. Lady in the water. Lady, Lady in the water. Lady in the water. Yep, yeah. that was her first shot. She didn't even have to uh, audition for it. Mm-hmm. Literally, was handed it handed to her. Of course, it was. <laughs> and I and I don't mean that in a bad way. Yet. I mean yeah. that's not, that sounded really bad. Like you know, but come on, she's Ron Howard's daughter. So <laughs> yeah, you know. So and she she got trained by one of the best directors out there too. Yeah, her father. <laughs> yeah. Opie. Opie. <laughs> Richie Cunningham. <laughs> All right. Well, that about wraps up our show. And I have nothing else to say. So uh, I'm Mark. I'm Rob. <laughs> and I'm Steve. <laughs> Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. And this was Panels for Pixels, everybody. We'll see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs>